What's up everyone? Thanks for joining me today. In this video, we're going to look at one aspect of James Wilstrop's game. I think he is a fantastic example for any of us to aspire towards because he is so deliberate and intentional and thoughtful about everything that he does in the squash court. And in this video, we're going to specifically break down his serve. Now this video is for you, especially if you think that the serve is just the way to start the rally. If you take the serve for granted, or you think that professionals just seem to put the serve in without any purpose, you are going to get a ton out of this video. What you're going to get is specifically a clear understanding of the value of the serve. You're going to see several variations of the serve, we're using James Wilstrop's example, and I'm going to show you guys how you can actually use the serve to break patterns of your opponent and use it to your advantage. Let's get into the nitty gritty details of the serve. So if you think about the objectives of the serve, I would encourage you to think about serving in such a way that you prevent an easy volley for your opponent and ideally you apply pressure upon your opponent right from the get-go. The ultimate objective is to either win the point outright obviously or to force a weak return from your opponent. And with that weak return, create in turn an attacking opportunity for yourself. One extremely important thing that people often forget is that the serve is the only instance in the game of squash where you have absolute control over your position, where you hit the ball, when you hit the ball, exactly how you want to hit the ball, and you have no time pressure constraints. I would also encourage you to think about the fact that your serve can be a starting point for creating a particular combination from an attacking perspective and it can be used to break patterns and throw your opponent off if you've only been serving one particular way and then all of a sudden you change it up. That can actually force a loose ball in itself. And when you're thinking about the serve holistically, I would encourage you to think about the targets of the serve. I would encourage you to look at your opponent's position. You should look at what tendencies your opponent has. Do they like to step up and volley? Do they hang back? Do they try to attack? Do they hit deep? You, you want to look at what weaknesses your opponent has. So if you throw up any lobs and they're struggling up high, well, maybe the lob serve is the one you want to be using as often as possible. Or if they struggle with pace, then you want to consistently, intentionally leverage pace. You want to think about how effectively they move to and from the tee, how they anticipate, and a whole bunch more. So this is going to give you a really good understanding of how you can use the serve in effective ways in different situations by looking at James Wilstrop. Now, if you need any more help with your game, I'm going to put a shameless plug in here. Send me an email at alhadadarperformance.com. I'll talk more about this at the end of the video if you would like more information on what I'm proposing. Now the highlights we're going to check out in today's video are from the recent Squash on Fire tournament where James Wilstrop played George Parker in one of the earlier rounds. And what you see on your screen right now is a little statistical grab that I did from that match. And I really wanted to focus on James Wilstrop because he's one of the players that is so intentional and deliberate like I mentioned earlier. And he consciously uses the serve to his advantage by manipulating it. Most players, frankly, don't shift up their serves as much. I think it's an opportunity that a lot of people could leverage. Wilstrop does it so well, and you can see that from the stats over here. You can see that what I've essentially done is the match lasted four games. You see that along the left axis. And then across the top, you see the number of regular serves he did. And the regular serve, you'll see in a minute what I mean by this. It's uh, essentially not a lob serve, but it's not a hard serve. It's an in-between serve. Then he does a body line serve where the first bounce of the ball is near the opponent's feet. And then he does a body line serve where he aims for the back wall nick. And other than game two, in game two, all of his serves he, he hit were regular serves. But in the rest of the games, he hit as many as... Well, 37% of his serves were not regular serves. So three out of eight in game one. Uh, in game three, one out of 10 were, was a, were a body line serve or was a body line serve. And in game four, three out of 11 were body line serves. So that just goes to show you that Wilstrop is really changing things up quite consistently and he's not letting his opponents settle into any given pattern, which causes some uncertainty and hesitation in the opponent. 
Now, one important point to note is that all of Wilstrop's serve variations were from the right side of the court when he was serving to George Parker's backhand. He did not attempt any serve variations onto George Parker's forehand. That could be because most people are able to adjust and manipulate their forehand more effectively than the backhand. And I think Wilstrop probably wants to minimize his risk from experimenting on that side because then he could get punished quite a bit on his opponent's forehand. Let's get into the video clips. The first thing we're going to see is Wilstrop's regular serve. This is actually from the very first rally of the match against George Parker. And what you're going to notice is that Wilstrop uses some height, not too high, not too hard, but he gets his opponent in the back of the court prevents the volley, forces a shot out of the back. This was actually not the perfect target from Wilstrop. He missed it a bit. It was over hit, which put him in a slightly compromising position because it gave Parker the whole length of the court without putting him under too much pressure. So let's see a better example of a more accurate serve. So here we go, the same serve. And this time, Parker is in a far more defensive position. And this was the second best outcome. The best outcome would be an ace. The second best outcome is that you force a loose ball and then you put your opponent under pressure. And that's exactly what Will Straub did here using some deception and sending Parker into a defensive position having to play a back wall uh, lob. So for your viewing purposes and learning, I decided to create this. So the screen, the video on the left is an example of the first serve where Will Straub missed it a little bit where he overhit it and then the one on the right is of the second serve you saw where his quality was really good and he forced a loose ball and the key difference you're going to see right there is his racket face and the path of the racket so you notice in the screenshot on, in the video on the left his racket face has come across his body a little bit more and it hasn't gone up the way it has in the image on the right this one on the left is putting more power into the ball. The one on the right is getting a little bit more lift on the ball. And the difference, as you see obviously, and you've seen once, is that both serves get George Parker in the back, except look at the position here versus here. He is not nearly as low. The ball has come off the back glass and he has space to do something so he could drop, he could drive, and that's why Will Straub's reaction here, he's far more alert because he needs to be able to cover that front court or the back court. He could also rip a quick little boast out of there. From this position on the right, you see that Parker's far more bent. He's far lower. And the only real choice he has is to try to ideally get the ball deep into the court using height. But when the ball's that low, it's quite challenging to do that as well. And you see right here before he hits, he has to get even lower into that back corner because the ball is fading. So two clear examples of how a minor shift in the technique, hitting across and through the ball, or hitting slightly up on the ball, makes such a significant difference in the final outcome and the pressure you can apply on your opponent. Okay, let's check out the body line serve where it bounces near his opponent's feet. So you see over here, it comes near the body. The ball is bouncing near George Parker's feet. And what Will Strupp could also be trying, it's impossible to know unless I talk to him, is that off of the back wall, he might be trying to stick this ball with an appropriate angle into the side wall. So he's trying to catch his opponent off, and then he's also trying to stick the ball to the side wall. So things for you guys to consider when you're actually practicing these serves yourself. And then from there, Parker just resets down the wall and Will Strupp's on it. And the next one, let's check out the back wall Nick attempt by Will Strupp. So similar to the one we just saw, except this one is hit a little bit more at the body, it's a little bit higher, and he tries to get the ball to hit that back wall nick. If it hits there, it's a winner because the ball's gonna roll out. In this case, he missed it just a little bit, and it popped out. Now this is probably why Will Strop, if you remember from the stats, did not use this variation quite as much. He used the other variation, because if you miss this one, it has a tendency to fly off the back wall, which means that your opponent is oftentimes hitting the ball quite far up in the court, which puts you under a little bit more pressure. So remember, if you go for this, you really want to be deliberate about your target. Another serve that I didn't see Will Strop use in this match is actually a slower serve that he uses, which is softer than the ones you just saw, 
and the ball takes its first bounce near the opponent's feet, but the second bounce is actually fading into that back wall nick. So if the opponent lets that one go, they're really under pressure because the ball's not popping off the back glass or it's fading into the back wall. So that, that one I've seen him use in the past, but he hasn't, didn't use it in this match. But if you see it, now you can recognize it next time and then obviously practice it. The next example is, in my opinion, fantastic because Will Strop actually sets up game point by hitting a quality serve. So check this one out. It's a regular serve from the left side of the court, fading in the back, forces the weak boast, and then puts that winner in. So let's check this out again because it's a serve from the left side of the court. So you see over here, medium pace, gets some decent height on the front wall, catches the sidewall at an angle where Parker could potentially want to volley, so he chooses not to volley and steps back. But by catching the sidewall there, Will Strop puts some spin on the ball, and it goes and it's fading in the back. So you see Parker under a reasonable amount of pressure, having to get quite low, doesn't have too many options from here. And you see, going back to that video that I created recently from Rami Ashore about anticipation, watch, I'll put a link to it if you haven't seen it, Will Strop can read what shot Parker is about to hit from this position. So his eyes are on the ball. He knows that Parker is under pressure. He knows that the most likely shot is a boast. And Will Strop is already anticipating and making his way towards that boast based on the pressure, his, the angle of his body, his racket, uh, and probably his tendencies to use the boast against Will Strop because he's a tall guy. So Parker would probably want to move him forward, especially as Will Strop's getting a little bit older now. So now you see him move forward, and then he sets up nice racket prep, holds his swing in his position, forcing Parker to pause his movement, and then accelerates the racket and drops it. And you see the result is Parker's caught flat-footed because he would think the drive is coming, but in fact, Willstrop puts accelerates and puts this nice cut on the ball playing the drop shot and thus catching Parker flat-footed. And Parker, rightfully so, is frustrated at losing the game off of a weak boast after being forced to hit it due to a quality serve. So lesson for everyone watching is try to volley your serves, especially if you think it's going to fade in the back. And that's a skill that you'll develop through practice. Let's jump into a technical comparison of three different types of serves that Will Strop used in this match against George Parker. What you're going to see, image on the left, is the body line serve aiming for the back nick. The middle image is his regular serve where he got the weight correct. And then the serve on the right is when he aimed for the foot or Parker's body, but it didn't go for the back nick. It was for the foot, bounce, and then try to hug the side wall. So let me show you guys the differences in all of these serves and technically what the variation was. So when you see this, look at the racket in each situation. If you remember, the video on the left is the, the body line serve that goes into the back nick. Hence his racket come being a bit flatter as he hits through and the follow through is extended a little bit more because that's what gives him the little bit of extra power so that the ball doesn't bounce near his feet and it actually travels through the court towards the nick. But the setup, and I should go back and show you the setup, if you look, the setup for each serve is identical. And the body, the racket, everything is identical for each of the serves. The difference, like I said, is obviously the path of the racket. So when he's in the middle, when the ball wants to go up a little bit more, he's swinging up. When the ball is coming across, he's swinging across. And then depending on the amount of power that he wishes to put, he's extending that follow through to really guide the ball through the court to catch the back wall nick in the video on the left. The video on the right, where he, the ball bounces shorter near George Parker's feet, he doesn't follow through as much because he has less power on the shot. And then obviously in the middle, the racket has gone up and it's open and he's guiding the ball slightly higher as it goes across. So I hope that you guys find a tremendous amount of value from this because you can see exactly the differences in the swing and the racket path. But you also notice that his setup is identical. So he's not choreographing what serve is coming. His opponent is always going to be uncertain about the serve that is coming. It's a subtle change right at the end that adjusts the target. 
And again, all of this is based on his mind because he's chosen to leverage a particular serve to break a pattern and to throw George Parker off. And you'll just see here as the video goes on, each serve, see the one on the left, like I mentioned, body line going for the back nick, the one in the middle up here going towards the side wall, and the one on the right is landing closer to his feet. Each serve has a different effect, and that's the goal. So here's what you can do. Take a look at your target on the front wall and also on the side wall. But before you can even do that, you have to set an intention for attempting a different serve. I would encourage you to look at your opponent's position and also look to break their patterns. I would encourage you to be deliberate and make a choice about what you're trying to do. And then I would encourage you to take mental note of what your opponent's reaction was to each serve. So if you give a body line serve that's harder and aim for the back wall nick and your opponent has just, they're just totally flustered, use that periodically to throw them off because it's not just going to benefit you when you hit that serve, it's going to benefit you because you've put a seed of doubt, you've planted the seed of doubt in their mind in general because they're going to be worried about, oh, is this serve coming? Is it not coming? I don't know how to deal with it. I'm going to hit a loose ball. What if they hit the nick? So on and so forth. It causes a lot of doubt. Now, the last point, obviously, is you have to practice. So you can practice it in game if you want, but don't expect perfect results. You have to go out and practice it yourself in solo, in drills, do a serve, serve, return game with your partner or with a, with a buddy, whoever you're playing with. There are tons of ways to do this. If you found value in everything I shared and you are extremely keen and driven to take your own squash game to the next level, send me an email at ahadariarperformance.com and I can help you come up with a customized holistic coaching program to maximize your squash potential. But, there's a big but, please only email me if you are ready to put in consistent effort, if you are really keen to work directly with me and you understand and want premium high quality service. I look forward to hearing from you. Guys, as always, Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I reply to every comment myself. And share this with a family or friend if you think that they will benefit. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. All of it helps significantly. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.